Hey guys, good day, good morning, good evening, something something. It's Empyrean here and uh, this is a Sanctum guide type of video. It's mostly just my thought process of how I ran my Sanctums in the last few weeks when I was doing uh, Project Sanctum 2.0. And I thought I'll buy some relics to show what you could start with if you don't have the funds to dump like 100 plus divines into the reveal setup. So if you're new to Sanctum, should be a helpful video, hopefully. So let's talk about the relics first. I think what I recommend first is you buy some cheap relics and have a setup where you can complete every Sanctum and learn as much as you can about it in the first few runs that you do. So in order to do that, you can buy stuff like this, gain inspiration when you receive an affliction, max resolve when you kill a boss, or inspiration when you receive an affliction, max resolve when you use a fountain, or resolve on boss skill and inspiration at the start of the sanctum, or inspiration at the start of each floor, and gain coins when you complete a room. You can get stuff like this with lower or higher rolls and fill out your relic altar. If your entire relic altar is filled with stuff like this, you can tank so many hits and make so many mistakes and still complete every Sanctum. So um, that would be my suggestion. All of these relics are anywhere from 20 to 50 C each. So, you know, you can fill out your entire relic tab from a divine basically, and then go from there. We're gonna do a full run and I'm gonna talk about every decision on the go as we, as we go along and uh, Maybe this is going to be helpful. My relic setup is the 18 reveal, which is just going to allow me to make better long-term decisions, but we can discuss the, the short-term decisions as well when we enter, as if I didn't see what's after. So here, first, there's no decision. You always run the first room, and then after the first room, your first decision happens. There's a couple of objectives you have to do. You either have to kill every guard or every mob, basically. You have to kill... Um, the rare mobs and the guards that they spawn and sometimes if you pick up something like gargoyles that come with the guards you have to kill those too this was a gold reward you should loot all the coins that come from the end chests you don't have to fully loot the previous room the chests that spawn here drop like six seven coins it's really low value however the end chests these are important these are like 50 coins i think before scaling so those are absolutely worth looting. This is floor one. There's four floors in every sanctum and the first two floors cannot give you divines, okay? Divines can start appearing on floor three and floor four. So the first two floors, your objective is to farm as much gold as you can for good merchant boon buying, uh, avoid bad afflictions like deceptive mirror and collect some merchants or try to meet some merchants so that you can buy some boons. You can also go for pacts, but we'll talk about those later. So right here, looking at the rewards here is not that important because like I said, they can be divines, so they're pretty low value. You can start looking out for sextants. I think they spawn on floor two. I don't believe they spawn on floor one, but I'm not 100%. Go for a, a vacant sextants. Those are, those are always good. So here, deceptive mirror is terrible. It takes you to not the room that you chose sometimes. So you want to avoid this like at all costs. Minus 100 resolve is okay. And fiendish wings makes mobs faster. It's 30% action speed. You probably kind of want to avoid that unless you have a fast build and you don't care and you're one-shotting everything. So here we'll pick this one. Now we're down to 200 resolve. Inspiration is your energy shield for your resolve bar. Anytime you take damage from anything in the sanctum, you lose resolve. However, fucking yes. garbage. however, if you have inspiration, oh, then you lose inspiration before you lose resolve. So it's kind of like an energy shield. Picking rewards. So the first reward, if you click this, you get this now right here. And if, even if you die in the next room, you have the six fusings. The second reward is at the end of the floor. So you can open the map anytime in the sanctum. They made this in the recent patch. See how much you've done. Or you can see the rooms that you scouted with relics or without. The second reward is at the end of the floor. And the third reward is at the end of the sanctum. So you only get these if you complete the entire sanctum, you get this. There's a boon called the Mirror of Fortune, which duplicates a reward that you have already selected. So there is a strat of not picking anything unless you're okay with it being duplicated if you get a Mirror of Fortune. If you wanna min-max your chances of duplicating a Divine or a lot of Sextants, you probably don't wanna pick up anything long-term that you would be sad if the Mirror of Fortune hit it. You're not gonna get the Mirror of Fortune every run, so you might as well go for the consistent gains 
or you make the choice that, okay, I'm only gonna pick divines because I want the big divine explosions and that's all I care about. So for consistency's sake, I'll just pick up the best rewards from every tile because you can't really expect duplication every round. Here we have a choice, we get gold or we get a fountain. We don't want the fountain, we just want more gold, so we go this way. So another defeat all guards here and some gold looting. So there is a little bit of soul math you have to do with every choice. So for example here, you could go this way and pick up the five guaranteed chaos. But I think I would rather go here and get a bunch of gold. So when I get a merchant, I can buy a whole bunch of boons and make my run safe. For me, 120 inspiration and some amount of resolve is enough for me to complete the run. But if you want to feel absolutely safe, you will always want to pick up more gold and uh, more boons from merchants. Next choice, Volatile Anomaly or the Merchant offers fewer choices. I try to avoid Merchant offers fewer choices pretty much at all costs, especially early on. So I will pick up the Volatile anytime. Volatiles can be annoying, but if you have a fast character or you know you pay attention to them, when you kill a guard, a Volatile will spawn, will fly to your location and blow up. So if you stop and then let it blow up, you're fine. Or you can keep kiting them, eventually they time out, but they speed up a lot. This is a circular trap room, you just run in circles, kill the guards until the trap turns off and then the room is done. We'll pick up another 20 fusings here. You can control click the rewards to take them immediately. You don't have to click the reward and then click accept. You can also buy things from the merchant with control clicking, you don't have to double click. So here we can pick up a pact or we can pick up more gold. I don't really care about floor run packs. You can pick up some useful boons here, but I'm just gonna farm even more gold for an upcoming merchant. So I'll take the gold around. This is a find the exit room. These are basically always a square and they have four possible exits. So there's one entry where you enter and then there's three other places where the exit can be. So we enter on the right side. So the exit can be here, here or here. So you just hug the wall, run a circle or run the square and the exit will be in one of the corners. Okay, whole bunch of gold now, 1.2K almost. Pick up the last gold and then boss time. Same circular trap room, run in a circle. You can line up side the laser with these bookshelves. You can also flame dash over the laser. Just keep kiting the volatiles. We're gonna have to kite the volatiles for the remaining run basically unless we remove the affliction somehow. So first boss, tank and spank. He just has like a frontal jump. There's like a frontal fire, like that, like a fire breathing attack that like slowly turns. And then he drops a relic. Bosses drop a lot of gold, so make sure to run to their corpses when you kill them. And then they have two rewards. So here we'll pick the 14 fusings and the 30 alts. And we're done with floor one. At any point, when a floor is done, you can save the run. I just started it, so I can't anymore, but you can take out that item and you can save that run and run it some other time. You can also leave from every room and the run doesn't end. There's an end button up on the top if you actually want to end the run and start anew. So here we finally got a merchant. Let's see if we can actually do it. We can. So after the merchant, we'll pick here. If you don't have the relic scouting, that I have here, if you don't have all of these additional room reveals, you won't be able to make long-term decisions. You won't be able to chain together packs or stuff like that. You can only make immediate decisions. So here we pick the merchant so that we can actually spend all this gold that we farmed in floor one. Maybe it's worth noting that dash is not like flame dash. Dash actually moves you through the laser. So you get hit by the laser if you dash through it. You have to use flame dash or lightning warp or blink arrow to actually uh, teleport over lasers. All right, so we met the vendor. We buy Ornate Dagger, always. It's 50% more damage, it's insane. We also buy Sanguine Vial, it's basically 30% more damage. So now we have insane damage. Assassin's Blade is pretty useless if you have a good build, but if you have a lot of gold and you have nothing to buy anyway, you, anyway, you might as well buy it. Maybe you get a hard trap room, it helps you heal things fast. This is gonna fall off after you kill 10 guards, but I think I have no other merchant coming up here unless she's here. So this is where if you had the relic scouting and you see, oh, there's another vendor coming up, maybe I'm not gonna buy a useless boon. But sometimes it's worth buying a useless boon because it increases the chance 
that a useful boon procs on a pact or on a benevolent fountain. So let's say the next room was a benevolent fountain, which it almost is, and there is like two more useless boons here and they are cheap. So you just buy them anyway, so that when you go to the benevolent fountain, you're gonna increase the chance of getting something actually good. But that's if you have too much gold. I think I'm gonna buy this. Why not? I don't want to increase the merchant prices, so I'm just going here. That's, that's the only choice that I want to make here. I want to avoid the bad afflictions. We're still on floor two. This um, is the first fireball trap room. I found most success in like just going through the middle and just kind of zigzagging. Only the front of the fireball hits, okay? Like the line that they drag doesn't do damage. It's only the front that has the hitbox. So you can kind of go into the fire as long as you're behind the fireball. It seems like this is the way to go. But as you can see, there's a breakage here. You can flame dash up here and completely skip the other fireball trap on the top. It's worth noting that you can place totems and actually block the fireballs, okay? And they don't AOE. They're not like Exarch balls. So you can build a wall and save your resolve. Obviously, it's better if you get some ranged totems so you don't have to place them at your feet, but yeah. Okay, so... We haven't done this one before. This one is four fireballs and three of them shoot. Yeah, I have level one totem, so they instantly die. So you just look for the opening and slowly work your way up. There's gonna be some mines which you have to trigger and then run out of. But other than that, you just look for the one of the four opening and then you have to do this twice in every room like this. We made it to the next choice. So here is when the, when the long-term choices come in, okay? So here, if I just had the immediate choice, I would either pick the Pact or the Benevolent Fountain. I think I would pick the Benevolent Fountain anyway. However, we really want to get to the Radiant Fountain. The Radiant Fountain is like the most OP tile that isn't rewarding. It's going to make your run extremely safe. It's going to give you a boon. It's going to take away an affliction and it's going to give you 200 inspiration, which is insane. So we're going to go down and hog the bottom to get to this Radiant Fountain. The Gargoyle affliction is completely fine. It just gives an extra like two white mobs to a guard. This is another clear all. Sometimes there is a yellow mob that needs to climb up at the start to kill that and click the Benevolent Fountain. We got a Silver Chalice, which is a very nice boon. It's a boon that converts the next minor boon to a major boon. So whatever we'll get from the Radiant Fountain is gonna get converted. This is a Chaos boss. I kinda killed it too fast because I have like the Giga Damage boons. This has like purple projectiles. They can hit you and they do some damage. Just, you know, stay away and avoid the projectiles. Uh, we'll pick up the Vol Orbs and go to the Radiant Fountain. This is the laser room, the new laser room that they added this league. These lasers are not like the other lasers. They don't have a line of sight. They have a point that they shoot on the ground and only that point does damage. So you can run through the laser beam as long as your character is not where the laser beam ends. That's the only place they do damage. Okay, Radiant Fountain. We get a Silver Descry, which means every time we get hit in a room, we won't take resolve damage on the first time in every room we get hit. That is a very nice and very safe major boon. Now, at this point, I would probably farm more gold, but I'm just gonna pick the pact now to like show off some pact stuff and uh, start learning about pacts. This is a defeat all with the yellow mob at the start. So, what are pacts? Pacts are tiles with the firm handshake. You have three choices, which is generally an upside, with the downside, and if you pick any single one of them, there is a reward that's behind it. You have no access to this reward until you pick at least one pact, okay? So these rewards are basically like these, but they are random. So it, they could be the same like this, or it could be alks, or it can be whatever. On floor three, they can be divines, and floor four, they can be mirrors. So pacts are nice. They can also make your run a lot easier because I'm running a lot of inspiration. At this point, I'm treating my resolve as a resource. So I pick up every pact that deletes resource. I'm gonna pick this first because eventually I will delete every single one with percentage. So right now I'm just gonna delete 200. 
and I get 100 inspiration. And now I'm gonna delete half of that to gain two minor boons. That is definitely worth picking up. I got prayer beads, so the next room is easy. And I got half merchant price. That is an awesome one. So every merchant boon is now gonna cost half as much. And I get to pick up 14 scours. Doesn't matter how many packs you pick, you just get one reward after. Okay, let's do the second floor boss. So this boss is the only boss that instantly activates the moment you move. The moment you get out of grace, the fight will start so you can't pre-stack rage or anything like that. This is the only boss that does this. All of the other bosses you have a safe spot where you can like do stuff or pre-cast or whatever. This is a duo. There's one guy here, one guy here. I think when you kill one of them, the other guy heals the fool. I'm not sure. But they just die. It's fine. They have some like red projectile, red like ball that they throw at you. As with every boss in PoE, run in circles around it and shoot at it until it dies. Try to not get hit by anything. This is the chest for whatever we picked for end of floor two. We pick some chaos, we pick some fusings, and move on to floor three. So this is where things get exciting because now we can find divines. And if you have reveal relics, you can start planning a long-term run or a long-term journey here. We want to mouse over every single reward tile and unfortunately no divines. Doesn't really matter. Here is some sextants. We're probably gonna start on the bottom for merchant because we can buy some cheap boons and then go down because we can grab this pact. Pacts can be divines here, remember? So we'll check what this bottom room is and then grab this pact. That's my long-term plan. We'll see if that changes. And next vendor. Okay, so we got the all-seeing eye. This is GG, okay? If you see this, you buy this. Every single tile will be revealed if you have this. So now all of my relics are gonna be worthless. It's worth noting about this that it overwrites all the smoke afflictions. Black smoke, purple smoke, golden smoke, red smoke. These are afflictions that change the way you see the rooms. Purple smoke doesn't let you see the what afflictions the room have. Golden doesn't let you see the rewards. Red doesn't let you see the room types, which is kind of whatever, unless you're afraid of some hard trap rooms. This overrides all of that. So if you have all seeing eye, you are good to pick up those afflictions as well, which otherwise would be kind of brick. Again, I'm at a point where I have so much gold that I can just buy these, even though they're not really useful for me. I'm just buying them to increase the chances of good stuff showing up later. So we have all seeing eye, very nice. We can make long-term decisions, even if we didn't have the scouting relics. This is kind of an awkward meteor room. You just run in circles, guard spawn and meteor spawn. Fortunately, the visual clarity is not great in this room because the meteors look like kind of like there's gold on the ground. It's like the same kind of spell effect. Moving on. So here, I would definitely not pick this because it was golden smoke. But now that I have all seeing eye, if I wanted the rewards here, I would go for the sextants. That is three sextants. However, there's another merchant here, but I don't really, I don't feel unsafe anymore. I'm deleting everything. We have all seeing eye. I don't really care about this merchant. There is no good reward for me to duplicate. I don't have a divine yet, so I don't really care even if I find a duplication. So I think I will just go for the three sextants. It's probably the most value. And then we'll go for this pack later and we'll pick up this merchant last. We cannot chain multiple handshakes. We can only pick one. So I'm gonna pick one handshake and then a merchant after, because maybe we get a divine on the, on the pact and then we can duplicate it with the merchant. We'll see. Three sextants and uh, fountain and then down for the pact. This is another mini boss, does some yellow circles on the ground. Not a dangerous boss at all. That's probably the easiest boss. There's a green one, there's a red one, there's a purple one and a yellow one. It's the four mini bosses. So we got to the next pact. This is a alternating trap room. These and then these, and then these, and then these, and so on. You just alternate, you can run through, it doesn't do that much damage, and you can flame dash up here on the first chance that you get, and do another one of these. I'll show you how it looks to just run through it. See, you're kind of fine, it's a lot of downtime. It's not like a, not like a lab. 
I would pick this, but I don't have enough resolve to pick this anymore. I'm down to uh, 50 resolve. So we're gonna lose a random minor boon and a random minor affliction, just so we can engage with the pact. We lost the merchant price, that's kind of painful, but whatever, at this point we're pretty set. And we got six sextants for it, which is pretty good money. Let's check the last merchant. Now I only have 580 gold for this merchant, so I can only buy like one or two things. Finish this room. All right, we could get the silver tongue back. Uh, Scrying crystal is a really good small boon. It lets you scout one layer ahead, but now we have all seeing eye, so it's basically completely useless. I'm gonna buy this back and now I can afford more coins found as well. So I'll buy that too. Floor three boss is uh, probably the hardest one. It has like laser traps that she activates and she has like a frontal cone projectile thing that she fires at you and she kind of turns until the last second so you have to run around her in like a fast circle so i usually stand at a wall and then she does the first thing she charges in and then and then she dies and then these lasers still do damage and resolve damage after she's dead so wait until they end and then pick up your gold so floor three boss can already drop the vines and we got one, so that's nice. If we can finish the run, we have a divine in the bag. Again, if you are not comfortable finishing this run, you can sell this book to someone else. So floor four is the most exciting scouting because you can find mirrors in floor four. You're not going to, but you might, you know, some people did. And you can find divines, of course. And big sextants here, look at this, 16 sextants. In big bulk, that's almost half a divine in sextants. There's one divine here, however, there's two pacts here. I think we, I think we have to check. Okay, so if you didn't have any scouting, you would see this and this. So what would you pick? You would either pick the merchant if you had gold, but we don't. So we'll just pick this for vol orbs, and then this for a lot of sextants. And then merchant, sextant, Packed, and then we'll see if we want a gumba. This is the hardest room in the game, I think. It's four laser traps, not a lot of place to move, and a lot of guards spawning. So I just generally run a line in the middle in between the four lasers, and then kind of hog the walls after. Okay, the room is over. But so I, you either run like this arc in between the lasers, or you run an arc like this, and then you like go to the side, flame dash over one of them. Hog the side, flame dash over the other one. Monsters deal 50% more damage. It's kind of rough if, uh, you know, you're a really, really squishy build. You can actually just die to uh, some of the guards. There's a shortcut here. This is another alternating AOE trap, Baron trap. You flame dash out here, then here, and then down here, and then that's it. All of these look the same. This, this room is always the same. Okay. 16 sextants, good. And now merchant, what can we buy? We could buy wooden effigy, which we take last resolve damage, very nice, and reduced action speed, so the mobs are slower. That's all very nice. At this point, I will probably just buy this anyway, just for the more boon thing, so the pacts can give us maybe duplication. Here we'll pick three sextants and then go to the pact. First pact, again, we're treating our resolve as a resource. We don't care about losing it all. You cannot lose your resolve to pacts, okay? If you go down to one resolve and you pick up something that deletes 50%, deletes 20 25% of it, you cannot die. You cannot resolve die to take in a pact. If there is a pact where you lose 200 resolve and gain 100 inspiration, if you don't have 200 resolve, you cannot take that pact. The game will not let you take that pact. If you enter a room, that says minus 100 max resolve, and you don't have 100 resolve, you will just go down to one. You cannot die to getting that affliction. So that you're safe. You can join those rooms, no problem. We got another divine from this pact. I'm liking these pacts. At this point we're scouted, so we'll just pick this too. You can press the space bar to cycle through what you're getting. Okay, so if you picked up a merchant and you bought like five things, you wanna, oh, you don't wanna wait for the pop-ups, you can press the space bar to skip the pop-ups. Here is your first real gumba. 
So generally, I went for raw divines because I just wanted to get to the mirror. However, you can always gumba. Floor four, I would always take packs because there can be a mirror. However, here is a guaranteed divine, but we already have two guaranteed divines from the Sanctum. So I think I'm just gonna skip the third one and I'm gonna take the pact just on the off chance that it's a mirror. Wouldn't that be funny if we found a mirror after the Sanctum project while recording the guide? You know, we can't pass on that opportunity. However astronomical it is. All right, pick up this and this. Traps are disabled, very safe. And we get two annulments, no mirror. So we lost out on, the, on, on a divine because of this. That's okay. All right, the final boss has two phases, or rather three. The first phase of the first boss is here. There is red smoke here, which is a trap and it also isn't. So as you can see, I picked up traps are disabled, right? But the red fog is still here. So it's not a trap. However, if you pick up traps are slower or traps are faster, that affects the rate at which this fog moves through the area. So it's also a trap and it's also not a trap. It's kind of weird. Anyway, the boss starts here. So you can pre-stack here. I have full rage or full, yeah, full rage. And then she like melees towards you and you want to kill her right after. If she does a bait as gaze cast after, you can line up side it and go behind this. So sometimes she does a frontal like laser. She says, you cannot escape bait as gaze. You want to line up side that because that does damage and resolve damage. It's, it's scary. Then you go through this like mini trap gauntlet. There is um, fireballs going here, but we have traps are disabled, so there's nothing. There's also some fireballs here, very easy. And then second phase. I'll show you the bait as gaze thing. She has the red AOE. No, I don't, because my Mirage Archer just kills the boss. Never mind, it's a it's a frontal channeling chain lightning laser, okay? You just go around them. She she has a very slow turn rate, so uh, it's very easy to like go around her. Okay, last boss. You really want to have big damage for this boss, okay? You cannot, you can no longer skip this boss, okay? You used to be able to just say, okay, I'm done with the Sanctum. I just want my rewards. I no longer want to risk killing the last boss. I'm just done. You can no longer do that, okay? You have to kill the last boss. Otherwise, you fail the run and you don't get anything. This, and this is the hard part. So this boss has a red laser attack, which if you're on low graphics, is really hard to see, okay? It happened to me three times during my entire run to uh, 150 Sanctums. She only starts doing that after 50% HP, okay? So until 50%, she does swirling weapons that just puts down and then they swirl on the ground. It's like you don't stand in it. And then she has like a frontal laser that she turns at you, charges up slowly and then fires it. It's like a very slowly charging divine ire if you know that ability. And then let me find the red laser. Okay, so here, as you can see, there is openings in the red laser and you have to go in between the, the into those openings. Otherwise the laser does a lot of damage. So you just go to the openings, but it's so hard to see on a, on a, on, a, on lower graphics. So you should, uh, you should probably turn up your graphics for this. If you have boons with more damage and you have a build with like a few million or like 10, 10, 15 million single target, which if you're making a Sanctum build, you should. Let's try to turn up the graphics. Okay, so I turned up my bloom and I turned up my graphics to high-ish. So we're gonna try to trigger the, the red laser phase. Here we go. She has frontal projectile. She has like a jump attack. There's like a red AOE, don't stand in that, obviously. That's the charging laser. She charges it and then fires it. Okay, let's get her to 50% to trigger the laser phase. Okay. No, she... Okay, listen. We'll buy a floor four <laughs> and try to trigger that ability again. Take two. Okay, yeah, Mirage Archer off. Oh, here is the cannot escape beta's gaze. There we go. You see the slow turn rate? You just uh, 
walk around her, it's fine. And now, let's try to get to the laser phase. It did look better already. The Beta's gaze already looked better with the graphic setting, so let's see. Just gonna instantly get her to uh, 50%. Inevitable. And that should be enough. That's the laser. Okay. Now she goes to the middle. And she goes invulnerable, so you can't even do damage. And there comes the AoE circles. You just look for the opening, and you go to the opening. You have to do like six or seven waves or something, and then she stops, and you get to fight her again. Okay, yeah, it looks a little better with these graphic settings, but it's still not a visually very clear ability. But anyway, that is the, that is the last boss. If you have a lot of damage, you basically never have to deal with that. You just destroy her in two seconds. There's no phases. She only goes invincible if she goes to the middle and casts that storm. If you have a lot of damage, you can completely avoid that. So that is, uh, that is the Sanctums. It's worth noting about a different Relic strat, which I have not run. But I think if you are capable of running that, I don't think you need this guide. So there is a merchant strat, and some of those relics cost 30 plus divines. It's the merchant has two additional choice, and you get coins on room completion. The strat involves buying every single boon in the game and only picking up divines, and then you're getting the duplication from the merchant to duplicate divines. There is not only a minor boon that duplicates one reward, there is a major boon that duplicates three rewards. There is also unique relics, but you can't run those with the, with the merchant strat because they don't let you buy boons. So there is an hour of divinity relic. It duplicates two random offerings, but you cannot have boons. There is a gilded chalice, which replicates four random offerings, but you cannot recover resolve. So the, the expensive merchant strat is running gilded chalice and a whole bunch of merchant extra choice and merchant reduced price or uh, gold on the floor completion relics and then buying every single one and duplicating some divines. That's how you get the big divine explosions. That's how you duplicate a mirror if you find one and then the duplication procs. So these are two divines each or 2.5 in bulk. So you're investing quite a lot into your runs if you do that. The cheap way to run the strat that I did is to get single room reveal relics. These are the relics that I ran and these are <laughs> very expensive. These are like 20, 20 divine relics, some of them, and then like 13 divines on the coin ones. If you get like some low coin count, it's like 10, 11, 12, 13. I ran a combination of these. However, if you get a single room reveal relic with inspiration of the start, that's already too divine. And if you just get a single room reveal with a little bit of inspiration, we're already down to the chaos range. So if you fill out your entire tab with stuff like this, you're gonna have nine rooms revealed on every single floor and you're gonna have some inspiration and you're only gonna spend like two divines or so. I would recommend that once you're comfortable with how the boons work, which afflictions you want to avoid, how, you know, you know the layouts, know how much resolve and inspiration you can get away with. You can start dropping those safety relics that I recommended at the start of the video and uh, start going for either the merchant strat or the room reveal strat. And uh, yeah, it's very consistent money, very low entry cost. Of course, if you fuck up or if you make some bad decisions, you will lose some divines but those divines really weren't yours to begin with until you finish the Sanctum. So I think, uh, I think it's a really cool mechanic. I hope a couple of more people get into it maybe because of this video. Do we have any questions in chat about anything Sanctum related? Have you tried extra relics for Aureus coins, unique relic? No. There are unique relics which are all cheap. They are like 5C each. You can run this, for example. I think I ran one run just for the unique challenge completion. You can drop two of your relics to put this in and you can farm coins and then the coins will be converted to relics. So if you farm a couple of thousand coins and then you kill the last boss, you're going to get some extra relics. Another strat, kind of low investment, uh, but you, you want to go for coins then, right, with this. Do you recommend Sanctum for melee builds? Honestly, 
if you have enough damage, sure, but I would not because most of the guards do projectile stuff or stuff that's you're safer if you're further away, as is with pretty much all ARPG things. Melee is at an inherent disadvantage. However, you do take less resolve damage and less damage, I believe, in Sanctum when you're closer to the target. So melees kind of get, get compensated for that. But if you have a lot of damage and you kill the guards instantly, it doesn't matter if you're melee or range, you're just gonna kill them instantly. What do you think is the best kill archetypes for Sanctum? Melee and range? So Tornado Shed is nice. Totem stuff is nice. You can just place your totems and then run away and let your two totems do the damage. You can't like multi off screen. They made it so that you have to be kind of in range of the guards to do damage to them. Uh, but totems still work really well in Sanctum. I think Spark is also good. Anything with high single target damage. You don't need any clear, okay? You don't need any explode. You don't need Herald of Ice. You're only dealing with single guards, single rare monsters and single bosses. All you need is single target. Hex Blast is, is one of the top early league uh, Sanctum runners. Talk about unlocking relic slots. I have no idea how you unlock relic slots. I think I just ran a Sanctum and everything unlocked. So in order to unlock all of your relic slots, some of them will be like grayed out at the start. So you don't start with a full relic inventory and these last two will never unlock. In order to unlock those, you have to kill bosses and mini bosses in the Sanctums. Apparently it's it's the mini bosses. I just watched your Sanctum video and told that there are better stress for making currency than Sanctum, which is 12 demands an hour. Can you give some examples? Sure. Boss rushing, boss bossing, so like invitation farming, like a red boss farming or uber uber farming. MFing apothecaries, I think is more. I think there is a harvest crop rotation that comes close. I'm not sure about the exact numbers on that, but that's also really high currency per hour. I don't know about current logbook numbers current Tujan logbook numbers or, or Danigi logbook numbers. So I, I can't say that for sure, but that's also up there. Hosting five ways is more, yes. Blighted maps on the high end were about the same. I think we're around 10 to 12. Those are just the six that, yeah, top of my head. Would you have sweaty palms if you had a mirror reward show up in your sanctum and you're, yes, I would, I would. Unless, unless I had like over 300 inspiration and one resolve, I think as long as I'm over 300 inspiration, I would not be, but I, I, would, I would probably still be uh, scared at the last boss. I think, I think if I had monsters deal 50% more damage and or you deal 50% less damage and monsters have more HP. So I basically, um, I would be very likely to have to do the red phase at the end. I would be really scared with the mirror. I mean, I would obviously go for it, but yeah, I would be, that would be sweaty palms, yes. Well. That's uh, that's the Sanctum guide slash uh, overview. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any extra questions, leave them in the YouTube comments. I always read all YouTube comments and uh, you know try to respond to questions. Yeah, Sanctum project was fun and uh, I'm glad we did it. I'm glad we got the mirror. And uh, now it's time to move on to some other stuff. Thank you for watching. If this was helpful, you know, consider liking the video, subscribing, maybe. If you aren't subscribed, there will be more videos as always. So, thank you. Bye.